Welcome back, guys, to episode 14. Okay, so today we have our guest, uh, John. Okay, um, we will be you know, discussing like competition anxiety, basically. Okay, because I believe uh, everyone who competed or you know, still competing, they have this, you know, butterfly in the stomachs and uh, you know, the anxiety, of course. So, I mean, yeah, com- competition can be you know, can be quite stressful sometimes, you know, the, it depends on the level of competition as well. And if the, the level of competition is higher, I think you will have more anxiety. And, and I think in that kind of, uh, you know, competition, competition settings, right? Uh, I think everyone will have it, you know. So in general, you know, team sports are usually less stressful than the in- individual ones. But for BJJ, I think this is an individual competition. So, we we'll definitely have this kind of uh, you know anxiety and the stressfulness, and then yeah, today we're gonna talk about how to manage you know our anxiety when it comes to competition. So yeah, um, John, do you wanna introduce yourself? Cool, oh, yeah. So thanks for having me on, guys. Um, it's my first time yeah doing like a podcast as well. So, uh, yeah. So my name's um John John Tang. Um. I'm originally from, I'm from Malaysia, but I spent a lot of time um, like in Australia. I used to study there, so I, I got my, that's why I started jiu-jitsu, and I'm currently a brown belt under Lachlan Jaws. So uh, now I'm back in Malaysia training and coaching here uh, full time, so, and it's pretty much uh, where I'm at at this point of time. Yeah, John. Originally, you're from Malacca as well, or? Yeah, my family is uh, based on Malacca, so uh, that's why I'm staying right now. Yeah. Oh. I travel to KL a lot too to train with um, the guys there. So, uh, yeah, you know, that, oh, okay. uh, so, I think that's the main concentration of jujitsu in Malaysia, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 KL is like the uh, the mecca, yeah. mecca of jujitsu in Malaysia. So everyone would like you know go down to KL and uh, yeah, all the comms are there too. Yeah. Yep. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. So you right now you're based in Malacca. So you do you travel like often down to KL? Like yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, like almost every other weekend i'm going tomorrow yeah so oh, usually like a easy day trip or maybe like a saturday and come back on sunday night yeah. oh yeah. Right, right now just uh sundays like for open mat i i train at uh marcos escobar kota damansara oh, okay. a few those guys there and yeah it's good training for me so yeah but i, I heard that it's more like open mats on sunday yeah yeah so i joined the open mat there yeah so let's Ooh, go, that's... yeah. Like, I, I like open mat. Like, uh, it's always been my favorite session. You get to drill and roll, like, pretty chill, you know, like, very freestyle. So you get to work on what you want. Um, ever since I was a white belt, that's always been my favorite session of the week. Right, right. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, but talking about your training itself, how, like, how do you actually get to KL? Like, do you usually drive or do you actually... Uh, yeah, I drive down, yeah. Either, like, a bus or a drive. I'm driving more now, so... That's, that's yeah. nice, that's nice. Yeah, uh, Malacca is a small town. There's only two gyms here. Uh, like, you know, jiu-jitsu concentration is small. And um, they're not, there are no competitors, you know, like uh, aside from uh, the, the gym owners. They, they train and they uh, compete themselves. Uh, but the rest, like, they're pretty casual, you know, like just train for fun, which is cool. But uh, to grow the comp team, you need people to also jump in there and, you know, yeah. So right now you are training like six days a week. Yeah, so- pretty much. Yeah. So uh, we have some day sessions. I think in Malaysia, that's like I've only been back here uh, since last December because of COVID. I was working in Singapore before that, but I did a brief stint here in 2019. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, before that I was uh, uh, back in Australia. Um, so you know. I- my experience like with uh, with more Asian culture, like it's it's hard to get people in to lunchtime class. So uh, sometimes you get one or two people. Other days, it's pretty much empty. I think in KL, I've seen like if you're in city center, you, you do get like a good lunch crowd. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Uh, small town, small town has always been hard. Uh, yeah. But the main training is at night. So I will try to um, organize training with like, um, someone that can make it like you know like gym owner if they're, if they're not busy 
um, <laughs> coming in drill and specific training. Normally, like day session, I try to make it a bit more technical, uh, like drilling and specific training. Uh, just really like that kind of session is to troubleshoot and fine tune the stuff we want to work on. You know, not really a formal class. And I think like when you get to a higher level, like maybe probably purple, but like average, you know, I mean, not like competitor level, even a hobbyist, like uh, purple belt level, you start to like, uh, you can start to take training into your own hands and start to guide yourself. Yeah. 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 So that's how you sort of structure like training session for yourself. You drill what you want to drill and fix up troubleshoot stuff you want to work on, you know? Yeah. yeah. I totally agree with this statement. Like, as for like right now, uh, you know, we just got promoted to uh, brown belt early this year. So, I mean, even before that, uh, I have been like doing my own, you know, drilling this and that. So we are just trying to like fine tune our techniques and everything, yeah. you know. So we will just do our own thing right now. We will just use whatever that we have and all the time that we have, you know, right. because right now, like you said, I, I mean, I work uh you know in the, in the during the daytime and the only time that i can train is during at night with them you know so and sometimes i will try to slot in like an early morning session with one of my teammates so like we just do drilling in the morning like 6 30 a.m or 7 30 a.m yeah and just just purely drilling yeah. just purely drilling yeah. and then uh after that i just go back home you know because i'm working from home right now so go back home start working at night you start training again you know this is what we have been trying to do recently for sure that's awesome and like you probably understand like time is so precious you know it, yes. like, once you 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 know lose it you won't get it back so True. yeah for sure that's something i've also come to value more like every every like wasted day is pretty much gone you're not gonna get it back so um, yeah, I try to make the best out of every session, you know, mm -hmm. even even if it's like a one hour session, like try to make the best of it, you know. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah that's that's like you, a different yeah. topic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Probably yeah. nothing to do with the main topic today. <laughs> yeah, but currently you train out of Fauzin's gym, right? Yeah, yeah, I teach. It's called Affinity MMA. There's another gym called Panda, Panda yeah, Freestyle yeah. Uh, yeah. by Afi. They're, they're both under Bruninho. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's nice. So I but train what, and what, teach with, with both guys. Yeah, but um, talking about BGJ scene in Malacca, what what makes what do you think that how can you able to grow like such a small town? Like, what was the key point? Man, that, it's, it's hard. We've been talking about this like just me and like other people, not not just the people here too. Like, um, even my friends overseas. Or, man, probably this whole year I've been talking about that. It's it's hard. I think here. One of the main reasons is um, could be like a lack of being informed, you know, a lack of education about combat sports. Like mm -hmm. um, I'm told many people that have come like like trials, you know, like first first time trials, even like the friends, they, they don't even know what MMA is or BJJ. So okay. I think like you tell them like UFC, they, they know like Conor McGregor, Khabib, they, they know those. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, Davis, you know? yeah, but yeah. they don't know the sport. Um, I think KL yeah. is different. KL is very modern and like i think it's like a geographic thing right um kl is very similar to melbourne kind of it's very developed it's closer to singapore you know and uh almost like a city state type you know like like i go to kl it's like man it's a different world uh people are modern people are up to date with, with current uh trends and stuff you know people dress trendier so it's very modern here it's malacca is a heritage town i feel like it's still Maybe early 2000s, like two years ago, I would have said like 1990s. Now I say like 2000s. <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean, but I, I really feel like the general vibe, like you come here, you walk around town. That's mm -hmm. how it is. Even even fitness gyms, you know, um, like there aren't that many, um, like boutique gyms as well. They're not they're not that many. It's it's very small. So yeah, I think I think people aren't um, putting like as much value. Uh, and significance into fitness and sport here as they do in uh, KL and probably Penang. I've got some friends too in Penang, and I was asking like, how's the scene there? Uh, they said it's it's uh, it's growing, right? Like jujitsu and fitness that's growing. People are more outdoorsy, right? More like mm -hmm. running around and stuff, doing fitness stuff. Yeah, here, here it's yeah not as much. You you can see as well like people 
I don't know. I don't really know what they do around town. Like, I guess they just like let bang around and you know, like do do the usual stuff, right? Hang out with friends, like at a mama food court somewhere, like like chill, mm -hmm. uh, which, which is cool. But you know, I see that like, and then maybe two days in the week you could come train jujitsu, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Penang, I I would say like um the 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 BJJ scene in Penang is quite uh it's quite good actually because in the island itself we have a few gyms BJJ. Yeah. So it's uh, everyone knows what is BJJ and everyone know what is MMA, you know, besides yeah, you know, for sure. It's so exposure, right? People yeah. have uh, this more publicity, more exposure. Yeah. So here yeah. it's been the same two gyms. There was another one. I think, I don't know if they closed down because of COVID. Um, like they, there was a, a new MMA gym. The guy came from KL, but I, I never like trained with them. Um, yeah. Oh. So I still think, yeah, like, two, three gyms, the exposure is not that many, you know, like, I feel like that's, this is what I think. I think like many people see um, jujitsu and they think of it like, ah, oh, it's some obscure martial art. There's only one gym, right? In the whole town. The town is not that small, but it's just uh, a bit bland, you know, not much stuff going on. Uh, right. Yeah. So maybe they think like, ah, oh, just a few people doing it. Maybe it's not that special or well-known, but you know, like if, uh, what happens when you get like, five, six gyms popping up, like people start to take notice and, and it becomes a trend, right? They know, they maybe they realize like, oh, okay, like maybe there's more to this than what I thought. Like, like there's like six different uh, shops that have jujitsu, right? Like a gym is kind of like a shop, right? Like it's a business. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, kind of like, like you see McDonald's, right? That's so many, you know, like this is like yeah. number one fast yeah. food uh, thing in the world. Yeah. yeah. So I, I feel like here, a small town, any place with like, a small town kind of background i think this is the struggle it's not just here too um like uh i've coached in hong kong i've worked in hong kong. so after i left australia in 2017 my, my background then i was working in hong kong for two uh, about two years then i came back to uh, malaysia 2019 then i went to singapore now i'm back here so that's basically my timeline like in asia so hong kong when i got there was pretty small as well maybe like kl there's a lot of little gyms now and uh mm -hmm. they're just yeah it's just a sign of the times like you know like the purple belt slowly became brown and black now i think in the last year and a half uh, people got the black belts and uh opened their own gyms and uh, yeah you know started started their own ventures and stuff and uh noticing there's a there's a lot more like bgj population so I think KL kind of has that boom. Um, there are a few, from my notice, there are a few small gyms popping up too. Mm -hmm. uh, I also feel it's, uh, it's an influx. I know, I know, like many small gyms were forced to close because of COVID, unfortunately. Yeah. And so, like the students went to other gyms, right? So, um, it's like basically inflation. If you all go, to, if we all go to compete, it's like maybe just these three main gyms because all the small mm -hmm. gyms closed down. So that can also be like an issue. Uh, competitively yeah but yeah i think i think that's yeah that's what, what what you have to do to do growth like you need to have like little offshoots you know yeah it takes yeah. time yeah um, yeah but for small towns like the ones that can't like get these offshoots it's hard i think they just stay the same you know i, I know like hong kong like small areas they, they were stuck like that for a long time even in melbourne um you know like we had like melbourne and sydney are probably like the biggest uh, concentrated areas for jiu-jitsu. So I mean, Australia, not Melbourne. Yeah. So Melbourne, Mel Melbourne had a big boom. You know, when I first started, maybe like I don't know, like not a handful of gyms. That's more than I thought. But for sure, when you go now, like almost every area, you know, every suburb has has like two or three gyms. Like I wouldn't be surprised if there were like five, easy. You know? And there's so many competitions. So competitions also help promote exposure and growth for sure. So yeah, you train for the uh, Vanguard BJJ in Melbourne. Uh, I I know the people there. Yeah, uh, Jess Fraser, one one of them. Yeah, I think uh, the other black belt was uh, his last name's Gonzalez. I forgot his name. I think I, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know them too well. I've never been there, but I do know some friends that uh, have trained that there. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Talking about competition, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. How was your anxiety level when you first compete yeah you know? for sure so um it told me man it told me so long so many years i only felt comfortable years. like to be honest once i started training under lockton um 
I got I more confidence, like, because I had teammates there that helped me with the psychology, like, understanding strategy and, um, like, knowing how to score. And it's, like, when you compete, it's not just doing jujitsu. It took me a long time to understand that, not to, not realize, like, understand, like, being able to, like, do physically. Um, like, before, I would just try to, like, roll, you know, and not have too much strategy or tactics. I just tried to, like, like do my game and beat them with my game. Sometimes, like, that doesn't happen. You need to be smart. You need to know how to like control people in position. Like mm-hmm. say, um, I'll use, I'll use like brown belt, for example, like right now for Anne. So it's an eight minute match, right? Brown belt. Um, that's a long time. You know? yeah. So, you know, if you attack hard and you get tired after three minutes, you still have five minutes, you know, and you need to know how to pace yourself and control the whole fight for, uh, right. for the situation for five minutes. So I wasn't used to like, pacing myself like that not uh like more like specifically like little movements like like this guy's good at passing how do i stop a good guy passing from passing i don't just try to sweep straight away you know so little things like that yeah so it took me a long time to understand and learn like the techniques and tactics that can like control um situations like that yeah yeah uh, yeah. i I just like the open like with uh controlling anxiety for sure i struggle with this uh so much i probably for the viewers, I, I may not be the, the best person to talk with, but I, like, for sure, I understand, like, nerves. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't a um, natural competitor. I, I know people who, are like, uh, were just, like, made for it, you know? Like, they trained, like, the first month. They went to a comp. Uh, some of them won. They didn't. They, f- they felt, like, at home. They liked the excitement. I never really liked that, but um, I started competing because I felt it was a tool to improve. Uh, <laughs> It exposes your weakness so that's always been my drive in jiu-jitsu it's not about competing to to get medals you know uh, i don't see it like that way like i i do jiu-jitsu because it's still it's still an art for me like i want to learn and be good at the skills you know like it relates to like self-defense fighting like life as well there's so many good things you can learn from it. like being patient being strategic um being organized you know like, like it shows you a lot about your character so i like all those little like like martial arts benefits. You know? right. So that was always what drew me into uh, martial arts and the jiu-jitsu specifically. Um, so yeah, when I first started, uh, sorry, just, just to sorry, just track my thoughts, uh, get on my thoughts. So yeah, uh, when I first started competing, I was definitely a wreck. Uh, so like now, now like I've learned like, uh, like a lot of like uh, advice and just like, protocols like strategies to, to um, censor myself I would say yeah so the three main things like, I'd probably say that like, just for myself is the mindset right so like how you look at the competition like the goal the outlook of it like what do you want to get from the competition like I think that's very important it helps guide you and it gives you something to uh, anchor yourself back to like to focus back on to fall back on when you feel that you're lost okay? but it's probably more for like white belts that are still very nervous or haven't competed before. You don't just like rock up to the competition and compete. You know, uh, it's about preparation. So sorry, like I'm, this will all like make sense. So um, the first thing I think of is my mindset. Like, how do I um, uphold myself? You know, in, in the preparation leading up to the comp. The second one is the physical training that gives you the confidence. If you're not training correctly, and you're second guessing yourself, or you don't feel like your moves will really work, you know, when when you need it to. Um, that's going to cause self-doubt. So the physical training helps to clear the doubt. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's how I see it. Yeah. So just to be clear. And the third one is on the day itself, um, having a competition routine, okay? having a warm-up routine. Um, so that's so important. And, and this was like the last one that I did, right? Or like till I felt comfortable with. Uh, for years, like I would just show up, um, do like, a not so good warm up, you know, uh, and I still feel like a wreck. Yeah. So, um, let me just start with like the mindset first. So the mindset, um, this was, this was a great, uh, quote I got from Andres Brunovskis. So he's this, uh, he's, he's, a uh, Atos Black Belt. Now he's a Legion. <laughs> he's a Legion. Yeah. 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 Uh, he came to Melbourne for a seminar, uh, you know, went to the seminar, we trained a bit and we, we, like the, the gym guys went out with him for uh, food afterwards and we hung out. So um, I asked him, like, you know, like, uh, like I'm a big fan. And, you know, I was, was talking to him, like, like, how do you prepare yourself for competition? So 
I try to keep it simple. And, you know, what you said was uh, really simple as well. You basically want to make it like another day in the office, right? You don't want to, <laughs> yeah. So you, you train and compete to the point where it's just another day in the office. We go there and it's a hard roll. It's intense for sure, but it's another day of rolling. I'm there to do my thing, get after it. And if I can win, that's great. You know? So that's how you want to look at it. Um, so that really helped me a lot. Um, I've also talked to Lachlan Giles, my, my coach. Um, even before I started training under him, I met him once and asked him, like, man, like, how do I, how do you feel like, you know, uh, confident of not feeling so scared uh, going to a competition? He pretty much told me the same thing as well, like, compete till it feels normal. I mean, maybe that's more like blunt, like, you just got to throw yourself in there and, you know, do, do it till it feels like normal, till you don't feel the nerves. So I kind of agree with that. Um, it's true, the experience uh, builds up and you'll feel better. So uh, volume for sure helps. But of course, you, you need to know what to do when you're in the comp. Just doing like, you know, 100 comps uh, a year, but doing the same things and not getting results will not help either. Yeah. So um, that's my main like concept, idea. Yeah. You know, treat it like another day in the office. It's what you're there for. Like roll and train till you feel confident. Uh, this uh, second mindset, sorry. That's usually the one I think I think about. Second one is, um, uh, yeah, sorry. So this is, yes, when I do a comp, this is uh, my, my goal, right? So I give myself a goal, which makes it more uh, real. Um, a good teammate of mine, shout out to Kim Cousins. Uh, yeah, but she, she gave me a lot of help with this. So don't, don't go into a comp just expecting to win, okay? I did this for myself like so many times and this is the one that gives you the most stress I feel. So I think... Um, People feel nervous because, right, you, you want to win, right? People uh, feel the nerves because they're scared of losing, they're scared of failure, maybe they're scared of um, the unknown. So for me, for sure, like, uh, the fear of losing, like, freaked me out many times, you know? Um, and Liv, like, Lachlan's uh, husband has told me this before, too. Like, you want to look at each comp like a building block, you know? Like like I said before, competition's a tool to improve your skill set, okay? Right, so um, you, you don't... It's not the best idea to just go into a comp and just think like, yeah, I want to win it. I want to get gold. That's that's a great medal. Uh, so that's a great goal to medal. Um, but I think keep that as like a second or third goal. You know, my, for me uh, personally, my my first goal is to to like work on my skills. Like I go there and I like whatever I've been working in the gym, I want to implement that. Uh, those moves, those techniques, that skill set in the competition. So that's my goal for the day, trying to make this move work. Maybe I was like playing top pressure a lot, playing top a lot. So I'll go into this comp, trying to work my game, my passing, and uh, try to win all my matches with my passing, you know. Yeah, so that, that I think that will make things more realistic. And uh, it's also about managing your expectations. So if you give yourself a broad goal, like I want to win gold medal, you know, it's so broad. It's so many factors. You can't control everything. So uh, I think leading on to another concept I, I use is um, try to control the things that you can, you know, so you can control your training. You can control the, the skill set that you want to implement on the day, right? You can't control if you win or lose. It's it's out of your hands sometimes. So uh, this, this is also something my uh, old wrestling coach told us. So I still keep this with me. You can uh, just work on the things that you can, control the things that you can to the best of your ability and the things out of your hand, don't worry about that. So you can control your training, your diet and your thoughts, you know, like visualizing like uh, how you're going to open the match, how you're going to start the match, right? Thinking about uh, like your warm up, planning your warm up, uh, all those things like, uh, that those are the things you can control. So work on that, right? You can't, you can't plan for like, ah, oh, man, I got DQ or something or this guy like, Got a lucky two points. Sometimes that happens, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Situations, you, you can't plan for that. So, yeah, um, keep keep those thoughts out of your head. Yeah. Right. So those are like the main three things that I try to focus on, really. Yeah. yeah. Like 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 what you mentioned just now early on about um, our inner voice and our you know the self doubt, right? I mean, I I've been through that before, like back in the old days, like when I was like um, white belt or blue belt, even purple belts during that time. Yeah, I, I always often have this you no know, self doubt in in myself. Like, I mean, what happened if I lose this and that? And then yeah. 
when I, I, had a, I had a good story for that too. Sorry, oh. go on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah when, you, when you have that kind of self doubt, right, it kind of like screw up your competition because yeah. before you even go into the competition, into the match, right, you're already self doubting yourself. Sure. And then you kind of like you know mess up your, your brain, eh? and then you will mess up your 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 game plan as well. You know? Yeah. So I pretty much try to like you know don't think about the self doubt. Only can control what I can control, which is uh you know my game, uh you know control my pace during competition. This and that you know this is what I can. Control. Other than that, exactly. you know, yeah. Other than that, like how what people think about me. This and that I can control that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So this, I've, got, I've got a few like tips and. Um, advice for, for all these little factors because I, I know 100% what you mean I've been through all that like I still remember the competition I was at where I, I felt that so a bit of white and uh, I think blue or early purple um, so yeah that's what I was going to say was um, um, just just like another like concept or uh, like philosophy so so again like Kim uh, uh, my friend like told me this like if you're afraid of losing like the, the thing like to kill that is like, if, if you lose, you know, uh, the only person that cares about this is you, you know, no one's going to care if you lose, right? Your friends won't think any less of you, that your coach won't, they'll still see you the same. And to be honest, if like, you know, if they do like, like think that you're, you're a loser for losing, then they're not really your friends and, you know, other teammates to start with. I will, I will just leave that gym to be honest. You know? So like, if you lost, like, Pretty sure, like, if you were at a good gym, they were like, uh, congratulate you, you know, like for stepping up, for representing the team, for, for giving it a go, for um, trying, for having that effort. But if they, like, um, you know, made fun of you, like, uh, you know, bullied you for, for losing, like, stuff like that, like, I just leave to be honest. So if you are, uh, if anyone's ever experienced that, like, yeah, I hope that, you know, doesn't happen to anyone. But if you have, then maybe it's a good time to. It's like uh rethink where you're at but yeah like a, a good team would not do that so yeah, um yeah. When my friend told me this like i thought like yeah that's true like you know uh your team's there to support you and if we if we lose we go back to the training room to fix up our mistakes that's that's what it's all about so the, that's the win or learn part you know yeah. I, I totally agree with that you know because you know, I mean, this is okay you when you go to competition yes you are fighting individually you know you're fighting with your opponent yourself, right? But yeah. before that, doing the preparations, this and that. For sure, it's all teamwork. Mm -hmm. I actually said that like here last week. Uh, I was telling the guys like, um, like, like I'm aiming to do um, the Malaysian Sea Games trials yeah, uh, sure. next month. So, uh, yeah, me and uh, Fazin and Afif here are going as well, like the, the gym owners. So, um, even though it's a small group, you know, I, I was telling the, the gym members like, just because you're not competing doesn't mean you don't have a part to play, you know? Um, like your your job, like how you can help us be our, our training partners, like help us drill, help us roll. Because without you to roll and drill with, like we, we can't train. True. Yeah, totally yeah. agree that, man. Okay, yeah. okay. So, so that's that's your part. Like if you don't want to be a competitor, then you can be that uh the word for it. It's not a cheerleader, but your like team support, you know, your, your team support. So yeah. help, help them like drill. Um help them like look after them too like don't, you know like don't injure them when you're rolling basically like i think you can just drill and roll and you know help um help your partners that way check up on them if you if you're like maybe if you're very close to a, a particular teammate like check up on the mental well-being you never know like sometimes people go through like high weight cuts maybe they're feeling moody um you could like still motivate like you know like you see them getting tired on the mat you'd be like come on bro like you know like three more minutes like don't break don't lose like you know keep going like keep like sweep, keep attacking, score, help them, like uh, encourage them to win and yeah, do the round. So yeah, that's your, that's like your job as like team support. So yeah, true. And, 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 yeah, and, uh, uh, yeah, I was just like talking to the, to the, to, our, to my team and I uh, to our teammates this morning, you know, I, I kind of like give them a recap, like reflect, you know, they compete last week during, uh, you know, uh, yeah, they right, were yeah. and then I was telling those guys who did not compete, I told them the same thing. You guys are here to help them. You play an important role as well, even though you yeah. didn't compete, but you are yeah. like, you know, the lifeline in the gym to help the rest of those people are competing, you know, you guys are equally as important as them. You know, without, yeah, 100%. Yeah, without you guys, 
they can't improve they can't you know they won't be prepared you know so yeah without without them there's no gym either you know like everybody in the gym counts yeah without them there won't be a community in Penang as well exactly you know? yeah exactly yeah so yeah. um i was gonna say was, uh yeah basically like like yeah so jujitsu yeah i was i was like saying this to to the guys here like jujitsu is like a team sport and individual at the same time it's a team sport when we're in the training room but you know training all together like sparring drilling and all that that that's the teamwork and when you go to fight you fight alone you know so that's kind of unique in that sense um it's not it's i'd, I'd say right now i like these days i look at jiu-jitsu as like 50 50 50 like 50 percent it's a team sport and the other half it's it's uh, by yourself when you go out there to compete mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree on that because not only is when we, even though when we go in the mats and we compete alone, sometimes there are also situations where our teammates is there to support us. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and, and sometimes we do have like teammates that just go all the way without competing or without playing any type of sure. specific coaching roles, but they are just there. Yeah, you, just, you feel yeah. different, like the energy, the camaraderie, right? And the, the morale, yeah. the support. Yeah, so it always feels good. Um, I know for sure like when my closest training partners and coach are cornering me, like, you know, like uh, mid-match, I hear the voice, like it, it like raises my uh, confidence and it encourages me, you know, like midway and you, it really, it really does uh, impact your, your like psyche, you know, yeah, yeah for sure. I do uh, believe that. True. Yeah. yeah. But, but talking about competition itself, with, with your experience going in the competition, I'm very sure that you do have like some nerves like right before yeah the they never goes away yeah, yeah. so I, I guess like um i was trying to like list out like my protocols point by point like 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 the, the last part on the day itself um there are a few things like uh, i can share like how i try to feel good on the day and feel ready you know feel like basically like i want to show up to the day ready to fight for, for many years like i'd show up to the competition like the venue and not even want to compete, you know, that's how bad the nerves were. I remember like, um, uh, white belt, we, we had this, uh, uh, national level competition. It was pretty cool. The, the winner of, I think you had to win weight in absolute, uh, they would, they would sponsor, uh, a ticket to worlds like IBJJF worlds. Not oh, wow. I think I was able I can't remember. Uh, it was world. So it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Like incentive and, and, uh, prize. So a lot of people went. So I remember that comp, uh, this is another good thing of putting yourself out there in case like someone like is thinking about uh, to compete or not, like at least try it once. Cause um, you, you know, like once you're pushed out your comfort zone, um, you can really see like how far you can go. You know, if you stay in your comfort zone, like your, your level won't rise. So that was a great day for me. Uh, that's just me and my like, you know, that says that like, it's like a, a box and it says your comfort zone. And then outside it's like a bubble and says like your potential or something. So that day like really uh, proved to me. Um, I didn't win the the comp, but I got silver, but uh, I still felt pretty happy with my performance. So that comp like, I don't know why, but I got there and I felt so bad. Like I think I was also struggling with weight, which is something I'll say like weight, man, like, trying to make weight is like probably 80% leading up to the nerves. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think that day, I, I think I was a bit over uh, and, I was, man, I, I was just wrecking my head in. I was thinking, like, ah, man, like maybe, like I don't, I don't, I don't feel good. I don't feel strong on the day. I feel, I felt weak, you know. Uh, the nerves were like just doing me in. Uh, in my head, I was like pretty much quitting. I, I just thought, like, man, I feel so bad. Like, I hope I weigh in like overweight, and they just DQ me, and I'll just compete some other time, you know. That's how bad it was. Probably my like the worst mental level I've ever been. Um, I don't know, like I can't remember like what I did to myself, but. Uh, they call up division. I weighed in and I was all good. And I just realized, uh, then I just kind of like, uh, came to the conclusion, like, you know, I'm here, let, let's do it. You know, like, like everything like worked out in the end, like let's fight now. So, um, I did my warm up. Uh, I'll talk about like, like what I think is a good warm up for myself now, or what I like to do. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I did that match. Uh, sorry, I did that competition. Um, yeah, I won all the way till like, uh, the finals lost the finals on like two advantages or something every match i had was like pretty solid like i got like a nice points win maybe one submission but i remember it was pretty solid you know so that lesson like like you know if i had like quit i wouldn't have got that success right i wouldn't have gotten to that next level so that's what i'm trying to say like um 
fight through the nerves, you know. Maybe you feel so bad that you do want to compete or you pull out. I, I know plenty of people like um, like high level, like black belt, uh, well, champion level, where, where they still get like the nerves, like stage fright, that bad. So, uh, yeah, you know, happens to, to the best of people. So, um, but push through. That's that's my uh, that's my advice. Like, don't don't give into it because you're you're giving into your inner demons. You know, that was my inner demon that day. So if I if I just like decided to pull out, you know, I wouldn't have uh, gotten that learning experience, and I wouldn't have um, you know gotten that nice medal too. Like you know, like <laughs> that's that's yeah. like second, but yeah. So for sure. Um, for so for myself now, like that was like. Uh, like a really bad experience, right? So now, like, um, what I want to do is when I get like the the lead up to the competition, especially on the competition day itself, I want to arrive to the venue feeling strong, you know, like feel physically strong and mentally strong too. Like, uh, like I'm awake, like I'm ready. I want to go there feeling ready. Like, like, like I said, like, I want to make it like another day in the office, you know, like how you feel when you go up to uh, training to roll. Like, if you've ever felt like strong, ready to roll, you know that excitement that uh. The readiness like that level of calmness I, that's what i want on calm day so i try to simulate everything to make it feel like this is my best role in the gym this is how i feel i want i want that feeling on calm day so i don't want to go in feeling like ah, i'm weak i'm tired i'm, I'm hungry for sure for sure like uh, i felt in so many calms where like being hungry as well because because you know wait so that's yeah, more yeah. physical preparation that's why i was trying to like talk about physical preparation first before um uh, competition routine like on the day so um yeah, i'll just talk about this now yeah so uh kind of like go back in reverse so yeah. uh yeah that, that's my number one goal uh like number one like uh concept that i try to adhere by when i rock up to a to the venue uh so a few things like to make sure that you do feel good right uh like preparation is key so um if you know i kind of feels like studies uh where you have to like organize everything like that. Uh, that's kind of how it is. Like the best guys, you know, uh, are pretty organized to a point, you know, like it's like that old saying, you, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? Yeah. yeah so, um, yeah, like another friend of mine told me like, man, jujitsu guys, like at amateur level, they, they get competition so wrong. They, they think like you just put on your gi, you just rock up, you know, go into the car park 10 minutes before they call your name. <laughs> <laughs> that's not how it works man yeah yeah you like you you want you want to be there early so um i think watching like wrestlers like even like high school level wrestlers like watch how they prepare is uh very beneficial a, a, a friend has like given me some points so um no, they, they rock up to the venue early you know like let's say your fight is at three o'clock you know get there at three that's what i try to do now at least like two hours earlier or three hours. Mm -hmm. So go there just so I can scope out the venue. Like uh, I want to get to know the place. You know, I don't want to go there like last minute and feel like, man, I don't know where everything is. Sometimes like things run late too, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, you just want to feel prepared, like ready again. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I go there early just to know like where everything is, like uh, like uh, the resting area, like the seats, the warm up area, you know, where the scales are at. Um, where the bathrooms are, that's super important. I think you guys know, like, well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be battle dump, as uh, another good friend of mine likes to say it. So, everyone takes a uh, you know, has to use the toilet before they uh, they compete. So, often, like, you guys probably know, competitions if they're big, like, and it's a small toilet, it's all crowded. So, you don't want to be the last one, like, waiting, you know, like, that's that's gonna do you in so bad, like, like. You're waiting for the toilet. They're calling your name. Like, man, that's so bad. So oh, man. Man. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. all that early, you know, get your, yourself physically prepared. And uh, I think something that's good is I do this sometimes when when you feel that the room is too crowded, like the atmosphere gets to you, you know, because like sometimes um, um, emotions can get to you. Like people are cheering. You watch the fight. Like, uh, maybe maybe you you fall into the emotion that's how like the nose build up as well so that's happened to me a few times because you watch all the matches you see some really good matches and and, even, and it could be at white belt you know like yeah, I was, yeah. when i was at white belt i saw some guy like flying amba or berimbolo and i thought like, oh man like i can't do that like how am i gonna win like this guy won like i can't do that whether i fight him you know um i'm, I'm gonna get to that point later so how to make things more like real like uh relevant right? how to make things relevant so um, that's why I get get that early. Um, so to 
to like get your body prepared for for that like mental toll. And if you do need to step out, you can just uh, you know breathe and center yourself. Yeah. So yeah, just uh, going back to that point, like where um, if you're caught by the like the crowd, you know, because like all the cheering and stuff, all the matches, um, that used to do me in. Yeah. Like, I, will, I will watch people. I'd, I'd size up people, you know, because you don't know who's in your bracket and that makes you so nervous. So all these things, all these little factors add up. It's not just uh, training, but on the day itself. So um, what I, what happened to me was like, I look at this guy and try to think like, man, is he in my division? This guy looks big and strong. You know, I feel weak, like yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm athletic. Man. This, is this, am I going to fight this guy? But uh, what you should really focus on is um, just like who's in your division. You know, like even if you're watching like, uh, blue belts, purple belts. Uh, don't let that get to you. Like, like, especially if you feel like you're, you know, like you're not, you know, like the best guy in your academy. You're not the best guy in town. You're, you're just, you're just like an average person competing, right? Just, just trying to, just trying to have a go. Um, don't, don't let like someone that had a good performance affect you. Just focus on the first match in, uh, in front of you. Like, so okay, that took me a while to realize, and uh I realized that the only person I need to size up and look at is my opponent. So whoever's in the bracket, that's the guy I need to look at. He's the first fight. I deal with that first. Everyone else, like, is, is done. Like, like yep. yeah, they're out of my vision. Yeah? Right, so the, right. my target is, um, yeah, the first guy I'm fighting, that's him. I look at him and, you know, try to get a sense of, like, okay, uh, maybe, maybe I know his game or I don't know. Maybe you see him warm up or just on the way he moves. Like, sometimes you try to um, formulate last minute strategy. I don't like uh, agree with that too much. You should just try to do what you've done in the training room. Uh, but sometimes you kind of know, like there's a tell, you know, maybe, you know, like, okay, this guy likes to take down. You should still be smart about that. You know, not just go out there blind, um, have as much information about your know, opponent, all the matches you can. Uh, so that helps to, to be prepared, you know? So not to say that, like if uh, you're fighting a wrestler, you should take him down, just watch out for his takedowns and, if you're a guard player, pull guard like when he's not ready, you know. So you're more alert. You don't just like walk up blindly and pull guard as he's last doubling you. Yeah. Yeah. So well that makes sense. Yeah. yeah sorry. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't I, no, I mean uh, like what you mentioned, you know, those are the things that we can control, you know. Those exactly. are you know what we should do. Other than that, you should don't don't bother about it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So so having said that, like no, I said, like, the first guy you should focus on is your opponent. Um, so this is another thing, like, may, may, maybe going back, relates more to mindset. Um, another thing my friend told me, uh, like, don't think of, like, winning all your matches and trying to get that medal straight away. It's too much, you know. Deal with each fight as they come, one fight at a time. Not, not even one fight. Think of it as one grip at a time. Like, you can't, you can't visualize and plan out how the whole match will go, right? Maybe you want to, like... Like pull guard, bear and bowl him, take his back and mm. choke him straight away. Like I mean, that's been my plan for a lot of comps. Sometimes mm -hmm. it doesn't happen that way. You have to adjust a lot, you know. Maybe yeah, you most of the time it doesn't happen, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Oh yeah, bear and bolos don't work. <laughs> <laughs> bear and bolos work, man. But it's just I I, I, I like to do bear and bolos. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no. So so what I mean is you know, I've had some matches where like uh I had a big lapel guard phase, like worm guard. Uh so that was my that was uh, my game plan. Uh, you know, like man, I'm gonna like get to like uh, my position, feed the lapel, get like reverse worm, sweep and work the attack from there straight away. And I thought maybe in the first three minutes, four minutes, I can hit it sharp and fast. But the match didn't play out that way. I still got my worm position, but that took me like eight minutes. You know, so that's what I mean. Like you can't you can't visualize like how the fight will go. You it's good to like be prepared. Like you sh uh you should visualize like how you wanna. Do your game basically like have that game plan you should you should like visualize that run it run it through your mind backwards and forwards but you can't say like this is definitive you know it's not concrete it's just like a general guideline and it more like get your mind prepared like okay i know what i'm gonna do as soon as we bump hands i'm looking for that fast pull and get to my position you don't want to start the match going like oh, i'm not sure do i want to pull guard do i want to go for a single leg it, you have to be more clearer than that yeah okay. yeah so uh yeah, so that's what my friend is telling me, like, uh, not just look, like, see the fight going forward, work it backwards. So you're very clear knowing, like, from submission to the handshake. That's that's uh, what she would tell me. I'm still having trouble, like, looking at that. I still 
see things like forwards, but I think that's a pretty good mental exercise. So it gives you clarity. So this is more like about game plan. If you're struggling with game plan, um, yeah, visualization mm -hmm. like this uh, does help, you know, at least gives you a sense of security. You know, at least like generally what you're going to try to aim for, you know, yeah. and uh, yeah. if it doesn't work, then use, use plan B to get back to plan A. I agree, but I think that talking about the visual visualization itself from backwards to forward, what's the diff huge difference in both sides? Like what, um, what, what do you see as a difference? From what my friend was saying, I think it makes you more assertive. You know, like for me going forwards, like let's say I want the collar grip, I want to sit to guard, I want to get to the De La Kiva. And then from De La Kiva, it's such a hub, right? So back in the day when I wasn't very, uh, like I wasn't very sure about what I wanted to do, because uh, back then, like I like I like doing a bunch of different things. Although I don't think I was like a specialist in those areas. So say for example, I got to Dela Kiva, and uh, I like 50-50. You can get to 50-50 from Dela Kiva. You can do this, uh, Corbinia sweep, like sit up guard sweep. You know from Dela Kiva. You could do Berimbolo from Dela Kiva. So there are three games, but there are three different games, right? So yeah. you're not yeah exactly. That's like three crossroads. You're not too sure. So I think if you look back, like okay. Uh, I had the choke Amba from the Amba. I got there from like um, side control. How did I get to side control? Maybe from a guard pass. What, what guard pass was it? Maybe it was X pass or um, Toriendo or leg drag or something. And then you realize like, oh, okay, those uh, those came from top. Maybe I shouldn't do Berimbolo. Maybe I should pull guard street quick and get on top, you know? Yeah, it's yeah, a nice concept. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I, I'm not saying like, like you, people have to follow that. It's just, you know, another thing. Like, there's, so, there's so many... Uh, tips out there so whichever one works for you yeah but it's a good mental practice in a way but it actually yeah. for me i think that it actually opens up myself as well like I, I try to think like for me what if i want to do things like backwards to forward like what should i do and it actually right, right. opens up like a good practice in my mind yeah. as well yeah so yeah. so for me like i think like just describing that example just now i went with my my first, my gut feeling, you know, so off the top of my head, like my feeling was like, okay, it came from a pass. And then I felt like, okay, like from that pass came from a sweep. Like so I was thinking sit up sweep in my head. So maybe I should pull guard, get a quick sweep and attack from top, you know, instead of trying to force the bolo that like for that mental exercise. So, yeah, I think, I think um, I, like what I'm trying to say is like people that don't know how to put that into practice, go with your gut feeling because, you know, your gut's going to tell you like, probably your best thing, you know, uh, like the thing you're better at, like no one's going to start up with their worst technique, right? Yeah. I don't play deep half. I'm not going to pull deep half. In. <laughs> yeah. Something, right? you're, you're probably going to try like your, your strong, your strong suit. Right. So your gut feeling will tell you that. So, yeah. 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 yeah John, I do have like one last question for you, which is a question coming from yeah, a, sure. uh, our guest, which is on, what is the key element that a BGA coach must have to build student potential? I think that this person is an aspiring BGA coach. So right, he yeah. just wants to know like, what's the key that's element a, to a build a student potential? Yeah. Yeah. I think honestly, I'm still like looking at that myself as well, you know, looking into that area and trying to develop that. Um, I think building a good calm game, uh, calm team, sorry, is, you need like-minded individuals, like people who want to go out there to compete with you. You you can't force someone to do something that they don't like, you know? True. Uh, like I've tried many different exercises here too, just because there's a different crowd and uh, it, it's a good in a sense to try to experiment with things and see how the results go. But if someone is genuinely scared of competing, they, they just want to train for fun. So, so be it, you know, like it's okay. Like let them, let them have that. But someone that like has that spark, that fire to try to, uh, yeah, jump, jump into it, you know, and try to get after it. Uh, that's a potential, you know, like potential uh, guy to, to keep with you. So I would try to gather, like, maybe start with a small squad, you know, like three to five people. Uh, even with the white belts, it's fine. You just need someone to have the, the same values at first, you know. Yep. So you can't force someone to do something they don't want to. You know, yep. it'll be a lot easier if they have the same goals, um, same vision as you. So that's that's but that's the hard part finding a person that you know has that yeah has that competitive spirit. Um, in terms of building a like good competition team, so this probably will fit in more of the physical preparation side. Um, 
So it's not just training. Like when you're training for comp, you you do need to make sure you know the rules and how to um, like work your way through comp specific scenarios too, uh, as well. Like you know, like uh, th- these are things you don't learn in the gym. I've learned from experience, and I try to apply that in the gym. You know, whenever we have like a comp like like comp class, sometimes we try to do our ref matches, and we will make like out of bounds line the whole thing. So um, I think that's good. If you have a comp class in your gym, try to Try to do like uh, mock matches sometimes. We we do that here and I, I like it. Uh, uh, like you know, we didn't we didn't have any comps over the last year in Malaysia, right? So yeah, uh, my gym here, um, there were you know a couple of nights, a uh, couple of weekends. Our comp classes on Saturday night, so you know, a couple of comp classes where we made it like mock competition, uh, like session. You know, have someone refing. You you do your own warm up. You know, make like basically like simulate like a competition environment. Yeah. yeah. So like, get to the venue early, but the match starts late. <laughs> <laughs> Everything, man. Yeah. No, no, for real. Like, uh, there's like Dan Nuka, uh, trumpet Dan. Guys, for people that don't know him, uh, he's probably like, my favorite um, analyst or like he's he's a very smart uh, stra- strategist. Um, he will even like blast on the speakers like competition sound. You know, how people just talking and you you know like that uh, ambience that that yeah. That voice, mm-hmm. yeah. You put down the speakers and then you roll. So you, you don't get used to like hearing people shout and yell and all that. Because yeah. like when you run the gym, it's quiet, right? It's just you and your training partner, like five minute round and done. So calm feeling is a bit different. To train for competition, basically it's a big simulation. Simulate everything like like a real comp would have, you know? So uh, things like, like I was saying, like things that I didn't learn in the training room before, like you end up, you swept someone, you end up out of bounds, you know? And you only got advantage. You didn't get two points. And then it's not understanding because um, maybe you didn't sweep established or something. You know, sometimes it happens, you know. Uh, so that, that messes you up. You know? So you need to know, like, you need to be prepared. Like you, uh, I've seen matches. It's happened to me too. Like, you work so hard for for the back, you know. Like, you got the back. Maybe it was one hook in or something. Or you, you got seat belt. You don't have hooks in. But you had seat belt, you know. But you land out of bounds. Uh, yeah. for, for the for rules for the IBGF rules they'll start you standing Can you imagine that like man I've, I've worked four minutes for the seatbelt and I have to start <laughs> standing quite no, yeah that doesn't happen in the training room so um yeah you got you want to train and be ready for these situations for uh, point specific stuff too like who gets the advantage you know like double pull that kind of thing um being smart with foot locks using like toe hold uh, I mean that's a brown belt thing but I guess you could try with an ankle lock uh using toe holds to score a uh, cheap advantage. So you're not winning, but it's like you guys understand it's like more tactical. I'm yeah. using it just to get one point ahead on the scoreboard, you know? Um, yeah, like specific stuff like that. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'd say a lot of people that just train generally, they, they're not prepared for this and it's pretty easy to outpoint, to outgame someone. This is where it becomes more of a game and uh, I still think like this is important to learn because you know if you can't score points on someone you can't control them you know I, I still think like IBGGF rules it's it's mm. logical you know the points are designed for you to control the fight to progress your position uh, till you get a submission you know they won't they don't give you points for losing yeah yeah I agree with that yep I agree and John do you have like any shout out to anyone or is there anything any sponsors that you want to mention. On, uh, on show. shout out to Hyperfly, uh, Fly Asia, my sponsor. Yeah, main one. Uh, that's all. <laughs> yeah, training with here in Malaysia and Australia as well. Home gym, uh, absolute MMA. My coach, uh, my teammates here, uh, Affinity MMA, Panda Freestyle. Uh, people I train with in KL, but like KD guys. So yeah, nice. nice. Yeah. Actually, we do plan a trip. I think like last oh, and, year. Sorry, one more. Yeah. And uh, bulletproof for BJJ. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then actually, we do plan a trip. Like, we're supposed to like have like a road trip down to like from Malacca down to like KL to Ipoh to, to Penang for like a BJJ trip. We do have like those planned. Like, I think somewhere last year. Am I right? Oh, like, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it didn't happen because, you know, due to the pandemic and all, like, yeah, we have, like, yeah. lockdown, then they reopen, and then the lockdown again and all. And yeah. it, it didn't happen, but we do hope, like, you know, one day, like, we'll able to, like, just visit your gym and just... Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, awesome. I used to train there like twice, I think, with Fauzin in his old gym in the mall. Right, yeah, yeah. I yeah, remember yeah. that. I've, I've seen that one. I've been there once, yeah. Now it's, yeah. uh, now there's a long-term, uh, like the gym is, you know, like long-term uh, opposite Aeon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. More like, more like uh, central to town. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we do hope to like, you know, visit you guys soon. That'd be awesome, you, yes, yeah. Like, you can touch, you, let me know for sure. Yeah, sure. And also if you guys do happen like, come to Penang and all, always do feel free to yeah. buy our gym. For yeah. sure, yeah. I'd love to visit Penang. Actually, uh, study that bit like for primary school, but I've, hmm. I haven't been back since. Yeah. Oh, you should yeah, come back. You should, yeah. you should, you should. Come back. You, <laughs> and this year end, you should make your trip here or yeah. after like your trials. Yeah, Kachi, that'd be nice. Yeah. I know um, Fang from, uh, from KL always goes to Penang. Yeah. yeah. He was there like, he was here like, yeah, last two weeks week, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I bumped into him actually in one of like oh, awesome. my dinner time. Yeah. 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 It's supposed to have an episode with him, right? Next, the next one. Yeah. yeah. Should, yep. Yep. Should be the next one. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. And also, cool. thanks so much, guys. Yeah. Have a great day. All right. You too. All right. See you guys. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank bye. you. Okay. Bye. bye.